Hello everyone, welcome to episode 63 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring mainly crochet, knitting and sewing with a few other crafty bits on the side. Um, you will be able to find the show notes for this podcast on my blog uh, which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll also put a link down below in the down bar on YouTube. Um, so that's the good place to check to get all the links for the things I talk about and also um, to check out the Ravelry pages for any projects I talk about because that will have the patterns and yarn listed in case I don't mention them or I do mention them and you just want to remember what I've said. Um, yes, yeah, so that's where the show notes are, so that's a good thing to check. Um, I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and you can just find me elsewhere around the web as Cherry Heart. Um, so how have you been? Um, it's only been two weeks since my last podcast, which is my usual amount of time, but we've had, uh, we had half term last week, so it feels, it sort of feels like it's been longer. Whenever we have a holiday, I feel like I kind of get out of the loop and then I have to get back in again. But um, I consciously made more of an effort not to fall too far out of the loop this time. I actually wrote some blog posts last week and everything, even though it was holiday. So, yeah, so I tried to sort of keep my head in the game a little bit more. But yeah, we had a nice time. We had a nice half term. Hubby was off as well. He took some time off as well. So although we didn't sort of do anything major, we did do a few nice things. Um, my daughter had a pony day. She loves those. She went to one of those. We went out on a nice little trip for my birthday, which was actually in January, but this was a nice little something else we did. So yeah, just a few nice bits, but some nice relaxation. And looking around me, I must have had a lot of crafty time, because I've done a lot of stuff. I don't know quite how I've managed to do all this stuff. But, um, yeah, I guess I must have made time for it somehow. And just, I seem to have worked on a lot of things that have come out quick. that have been quicker than I thought to make, so... Yeah, I thought I'd started a lot of things. The other week this was I talked about it on the blog I thought I'd started a lot of things in a very unlike me kind of way and that so I says you know I imagined they'd all be hanging around for quite a while because there were so many of them but uh, no they didn't <laughs> as it turned out so that kind of didn't really work out anyway that's by the by so we um, I might just see how it goes for time I might have to save some for another time because I can't imagine I'll be this productive in the next two weeks so um, yeah we'll see how we go for time so, so first of all is Podmin and today's Podmin is a giveaway um, it was the giveaway that I uh, talked about last time so on episode 62 and the giveaway was the giveaway question rather was how many hand how many pairs of hand knit socks do I have that I currently in my hand knit sock drawer that I currently wear and uh, you know have on rotation um, and um, I asked you to guess the number and then I'll draw two prizes from um, the correct guesses. So I had um, lots of lovely entries, thank you so much for that, thank you for participating first of all, and I had five people that guessed the correct number, which I haven't actually said yet have I? Yeah, so the number of socks that I actually have is 53. I have 53 pairs of socks crammed into that drawer, which explains why I have had to put them into a bigger drawer. I was quite surprised by that number. That seems quite big to me. Um, some of you did guess bigger, but quite a few more of you, I would say, guessed that it would be smaller. I would have guessed that it would have been smaller as well, to be honest. But yeah, 53 pairs. Wow. I'm going to pop in a picture as well. I had a request for a picture of the drawer, so I'm just going to pop that in for you now as well. Thank you very much to everyone who entered, first of all. Um, I had a hundred lovely entries today. Thank you very, very much. And of those, five people guessed the correct number. So I've done a little random draw out of those five. So a bit of a spoiler alert. If you didn't guess 53, you're obviously not going to win. But anyway, of those five, um, there's going to be two winners because I've got I've 
two patterns to give away. So uh, the first winner that came out was Grey Hair. That's the Ravelry name. So that's Anna Maria. So congratulations to Anna Maria. Um, you have won, um, sorry, I'm just checking the name. It's a Jen Sheelan pattern that was kindly uh, donated to the podcast by Jen. Thank you, Jen. Um, it's uh, your favourite brew shawl. So that pattern is um, going to be coming on its way to you. And also... Um, I thought it'd be nice to put in one of my patterns as well. So actually, if you can contact me and just let me know if you'd like one of my patterns, I can send one over to you. Just let me know which one you would like. And then the second winner uh, that came out was Patty Crochets. So that's, uh, her name is actually Patty. So congratulations to you as well, Patty. And you've won the Rustic Elegance Shawl. Sorry. Excuse me, just checking names. Yes, so that's another of Jen Sheelan's patterns again. So those were both very kindly uh, donated to us. And I'll also pop in one of my patterns um, with that as well, if you would like. So again, if you contact me on Ravelry, drop, drop me a message, both of you, and uh, just let me know which of my patterns you would like to have, if you would like one, and then I'll get those um, prizes sent off to you. And then the next Podmin thing is actually another giveaway. So I've got another one for you already. I know, amazing, isn't it? So recently um, I was asked to contribute a little column to this magazine, Crochet Now, which is quite exciting. So this is the first um, issue that has my column in, which is issue number 38. And there's little old me with my little column there, right at the beginning. How exciting! I've never had a column before. I've done little bits and things for magazines, little pieces, but yeah, I've never had a column before, so that's exciting. Anyway, to celebrate that piece of good news, I've got one of these uh, magazines to give to you. Um, yeah, they very kindly sort of said they could send me an extra copy to send to you. So um, it's only a little thing for a giveaway, but I thought that might be quite nice, especially because... Um, you know, this magazine is a UK magazine. It's probably reasonably freely available here. Or you, pipe down. Um, yeah, it's probably reasonably freely available here in the UK, but uh, if you're based elsewhere, you might not be able to get hold of it. So that might be interesting. Um, this is the cop my copy that I've opened, but the actual copy that you will receive comes in the original form which is all sealed up like this you've got an extra little pattern that comes with it on the back there and you've just got a few freebies on there which is actually quite good look it's got some of those little bulb markers I've been using those and some extra um, darning needles measuring tapes all handy in a little well they're calling it a little I don't know what they're called a pencil case or storage case you could fit like maybe two crochet hooks in it it's a bit tiny but but yeah, so um, yeah, I'm willing to send that anywhere in the world. So if you would like to win this, I need to think of a prompt, don't I? Something for you. Sorry to interrupt this giveaway announcement, but yes, we've got a troublesome person who is kicking off. There are people moving around making noises outside, which is obviously completely unacceptable, isn't it, Bert? And Bert has to let them know how inappropriate they are being by barking at them loudly, don't you? And now we won't settle down again. Um, so yes, where was I? Yes, yeah, so a giveaway for a copy of this magazine, which I'm, um, I can send anywhere in the world. And I'm like, my goodness, postage costs these days, unbelievable. But anyway, um, yeah, so what shall the giveaway be? What shall the prompt be? Um, I shall open a thread on Ravelry, so if you wish to enter, do it there rather than the comments on YouTube or anywhere else because that won't count as an entry I'm afraid you will need to go to Ravelry and, um, just so I can get hold of people um, yeah so what should the prompt be um, hmm, crochet now the magazine's called why don't you tell me what you are crocheting now there you go um, if you want to link to a pattern or show us a picture that would be fab because you know inspiration is always good um, but yeah just tell me what you're crocheting now and um, I'll just do a random draw for the next on the next podcast for that 
So, giveaways and podmin all done. Let us talk about some whips. Um, where to begin? So I normally start with things I've done, don't I? So I'm looking around at everything. I need, we're going to do socks first. Just to, you know, stick with tradition. I haven't got everything on sock blockers because I'm not prepared at all. And now it's awkward because I've got a dog on me. So these ones I showed as a work in progress last time. Let's get these on here. That side actually looks better with the sock. Yeah, I made a mistake on this one. Can you see? It's supposed to be one by one ribbing. I did a tubular cast on. But I've got two knit stitches there, so I must have began, begun and ended with a knit stitch. I must have miscounted. Oh well. Right, let's quickly pop the other one on. So this was, um, so I did tubular binder. Bind on, even. Is that right? Yeah, tubular cast on. I knew that didn't sound right. Yeah, the tubular cast on. I was just saying on these it was flaring out a bit, which I thought was either due to the fact that tubular cast on perhaps wasn't just so good for socks because the socks you want the ribbon to kind of retract in again to help hold them up. It might have been because this lovely woolly yarn is quite thick for. Um, a fingering weight yarn. It feels like more of a sport weight yarn to me, but the yardage is, you know, typical fingering weight. So, um, or the other alternative is that I might have done the tubular cast on wrong, or made a mistake in it, shall we say. So I can tell you for a start that I definitely did the first one, well, I made a mistake. I think I cast on okay. But the first couple of rows you work is you have to slip stitches and I think I knit some of the stitches, stitches I was supposed to be slipping which made it sort of put a bit of extra fabric in there which makes it flare out a little one. This one doesn't flare out half so much. So that's the first reason. So it still might be suitable for socks but I do think it still might be slightly affected by this thicker yarn. What I'd really like to do because I'm most used to knitting cuffs in a slightly lighter weight of fingering yarn. I would like to knit it in something that I'm more used to using so I can give it a more of a comparison with something I feel more confident to compare against. Does that make sense? Before I rule out or rule in for myself whether tubular cast on is the way forward with knitted socks. But I kind of hope it is because I really like it. I think it looks neat and nice. Now I've put these on the sock blockers so the seam is there and I do think you can tell slightly. That is the only thing, because you cast on tubular cast on, the instructions I'm following anyway says to sort of work it back and forth for like the first, I don't know, a couple of rows I think, and then join and go in the round. So when you just sew the seam together just a little bit of a bump there. I mean I'm being highly critical I suppose. Not really ever going to notice that when you're wearing them or anything are you? I don't know if you can just do tubular cast on in the round. Maybe there's a tutorial for that. I'll have to look or try it. I don't know. Anyway this is waffle at this point. So um, as I say not an awful lot more to say about these really because I talked about them last time. Um, but it's one by one rib, tubular cast on, as I said. The leg, the stitch pattern that I've used, this pattern that I've used on the leg and the foot here, is a Nordic stitches pattern. And I think it looks beautiful in these socks. Uh, what are you doing? Why are you licking things? Leave it alone, you. Um, sorry. Doggy distractions. No, don't lick my notepad either. There are no things on this desk which need to be licked. Thank you very much. Um... Yes, it's in her uh, Beach Shorties, I believe the collection is called. 
um, and the pattern is written sort of with a cuff down here so they're just shorties but obviously it's quite easy to just add a little legging which I've done. I've done a square heel um, which is based on uh, a different pattern hmm. <laughs> which I can't remember the name of I think it's I'll put it down here that will be easier it's by um, Lena of the a little bit a bit a little bit knitty podcast but I can't remember the name of the socks it isn't exactly the same because my stitch count was different I believe um, yeah, so I did have to modify it ever so slightly, but it's, that's the basic idea. But I'm quite liking, I remember when I did that pattern, I really liked the square heels. So I want to sort of see if I can refine my little, my square heeled technique as well, because I really like it. Because it just makes the turn, it's sort of wider here where you do the turn. So I like that, I like the fit of that. And also you get a bit shorter gusset as well. So, although that gives you slightly less stretch there, it's still enough. Um, generally speaking, for me, it's still enough. And also, it means the gusset's over a bit quicker, which I think is a good thing. And then the toe, I think I just did a wedge toe from what I recall. Yeah, so happy with those. Oh, and the yarn, I haven't mentioned that yet, have I? It's um, Quince & Co. Turn, I think the yarn is called, as in the bird, T-E-R-N. I can't remember the colourway, I'm afraid, so you will have to pop across to show notes and Ravelry if you want to know that. But yeah, it's a really beautiful colour. And they look even better on the camera, actually. The stitch definition looks amazing on the camera. I mean, it looks good in real life, but it's a bit more contrast on the camera. But yes, it has... Um, I've been meaning to knit socks in just solid coloured yarns rather than the variegated and speckled yarns that I most often use because I get most excited about using them and seeing how they come out but I really do love the results of just just a beautiful coloured solid yarn gorgeous so happy with those and then my next one um again I spoke about on my blog I'm just going to take these off so I can get, I've got one of these up. Sorry, I'm muttering. Um, I, what was I saying? Yes, I started a pair of Aran weight socks because um, I had a knit crate came and it had Aran weight in it. And although I was initially a little disappointed in the colour because out of the two that were available it wasn't my preferred one, I then thought, oh, I could make socks out of it, and I got quite excited about it. Anyway, I cast on a bit for these socks, and it didn't really work out. I think the needle size I chose didn't seem right. It was what, you know, I looked at a lot of kind of freebie patterns just to get an idea of the kind of stitch count and um, needle size I should be using for an iron weight yarn. And I went with what a lot of them seem to recommend, I mean, based on some sort of incomplete research but still I tried sort of quite a few and they all seem to be there or thereabouts but just um I tried a 3.75 mil needle size that's UK size I don't know what that is in American sizes but yeah it just seemed really tight and still you know sock sock oh my word I really can't speak when you're knitting socks you do want a reasonably tight gauge but I don't know, it wasn't enjoyable to knit and in the end I frogged them but then I did switch to these. I'm being very long winded today which doesn't help and I've got a lot of things to talk about. So this yarn is double knit yarn. So I had um, wound up, I had two skeins of this and it's Stranded Dye Works yarn. It's her Industrial Kingfisher colourway, which I've had for quite a while. And I've just really, it's beautiful and I love it. So I've been waiting. So I um, actually got it out and wound it up with a view to making it into a shawl. Oh, if it's not socks, it's shawl. If it's not shawl, it's socks. Predictable as ever. Um, 
Yeah, so I was thinking I was going to make it into a shawl, but I was pro procrastinating about starting the shawl. And in the end, I think it was because I just wasn't sure about this colourway with the shawl I had picked out. And also the two skeins were quite different, um, which obviously if that happens with hand knit yarn, that's fair enough. Um, not hand knit, hand dyed yarn. Um, but because the crochet pattern I wanted was treble stitches, even if I alternated the yarn, I was afraid it, the, sort of, the difference would be too obvious. Now I could have tried it and it might have been fine, but I know at the back of my mind that's kind of another factor that was sort of making me hesitate. So I thought, well I'll knit socks, because if the sort of each foot is slightly different, you, it won't notice so much. I'll go with that. And also, since my Aran weight socks didn't work out, I still really like the idea of some thicker socks, and I've been wanting to try double knit socks for ages. So it all came together and I thought, yeah, I'll do socks with them. So again, I looked at some patterns. And interestingly enough, quite a few of the double knit patterns also recommend a 3.75 needle. So if that's right for Aran weight, how can it possibly be right for double knit weight as well? I mean, these are like different people's patterns, so obviously everyone's got their own gauge and viewpoint on that. But it just seems strange that... It just seems strange. Anyway, so these are the Blueberry Waffle Socks. This is the pattern I followed. Um, I've used it before and it's super easy and super nice. Makes a lovely snuggly uh, four-ply sock so I thought it would be even more squishy and snuggly for double knit socks. And it's actually written for double knit. Um, so yeah, I cast on... I think I just literally did it pretty much as pattern. I think I cast on whatever it said in the pattern anyway, did the blueberry waffle and then I probably went a bit freestyle on the heel and stuff because I thought I knew what I was doing because I've knit socks before and I couldn't be bothered to <laughs> go and find the link to look it up on the pattern again because I'm lazy. So the heel I just did a heel flap and gusset which I made up based on how I would do it for my normal fingering weight socks but obviously the stitch count was different so I had to adapt it for that. I think I made my heel flap too short. I think in my head I was thinking oh it's got to be you know working out the numbers I was like oh if if I do x amount of rows if it's x amount of stitches that means I'll have to do this amount of row on this amount of stitches I think I, I think I made a boo-boo when I was thinking about that I wasn't thinking about it quite right so I messed that up. So yeah but it's okay, it's good enough, it does the job. They're a bit short, so obviously the gusset's a bit short, but it it's not too bad. These are a little loose for me actually, so again, it doesn't really matter. So I could probably either go down a needle size, or possibly have less stitches. I think my preference might be to go down the needle size slightly, because standard recommendation for double knit yarn would normally be a four wouldn't it a four mil and these were only three seven five so that seems quite close whereas with socks you generally want to go down a bit so i might try 3.5 maybe another time so, but yeah these obviously worked up pretty very pretty very quick what kind of english sentence is that well, look at that pooling, how it crosses from one sock to the other. You can see with that line and the orange line, and then it, you can match it up. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, I am pleased with how they turned out, and they were super quick, which was fun. So I like the idea of some more thicker pairs of socks. I still like the idea of my Aaron Waite socks. I think I'm now repeating myself quite a bit, so I should shut up. So this one was so quick, I couldn't believe it. This is a pattern I've had in my queue for a little while, and it's for a cardigan. I showed you this last time, didn't I, as a work in progress, actually. So this is the Macrame cardigan um, by, well, she's Iron Lamb on Instagram. I don't know her proper name, I'm afraid. Um, I think it's her Ravelry name, anyway, but... Again, it'll be linked in show notes, so... But yes, on Instagram, she's definitely Iron Lamb. You've probably heard of her. 
Um, yeah, so I saw this on on her Insta, and I really liked it, so I thought, so I put it in the old queue, been meaning to make it, and yeah, I have now. I didn't put it on because it was actually cold up here in my little my little craft box at the end of the garden, um, my little house. Yeah, I'll try, maybe I'll put it on for you in a moment, or I'll put a bit of video in or something so you can see it on. Um, yeah, because obviously it's quite, it's quite holy, so it's not the warmest for at the moment, but it's getting mild all the time, so soon I'll be wearing it, I do not doubt. Um, I, uh, yarn was what I was going to talk about, so I used Starcraft yarn for this one, um, they're genie, so it's an Aran weight. Um, and a 5 mil hook, I believe, which I think was just what the pattern recommended. Um, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what else to say about this. I really like it. Um, the colour, I was initially drawn to sort of the whites or creams or a navy. But to be honest, I have cardies in those kind of colours, so I thought that this would be a nice sort of mid blue, might be quite nice. It's kind of a denim y, denim, oh my god, denim, denim y blue, <laughs> denim ish blue. <laughs> That's what it is, it's a denim ish blue. Um, I can't remember the colour name because I think a lot of them have sort of American y denim names. I need to stop trying to say that, it's not working, is it? Um, I want to say Memphis, but I'm not sure that's right. I'll pop it in show notes. Yay! <laughs> or a thing down here. No, I'll pop it in show notes because it's easier. Um, yes, but like I say, because it's Aaron White, because it's quite holy, it just whipped up in no time flat. And I really love this little edging that um, I think this is optional in the pattern, but I really liked it. I think it's a really lovely little finishing touch. So it hasn't got buttons or anything, it just sort of hangs. Oh, and you could have put pockets on it, which I was going to do, but to be honest, I sort of forgot about, and in reality, I'm probably not going to go back and do now. I wouldn't have thought. Um, yeah. So um, I shall try and get a little bit of prancing around in this footage later to pop in for you. And then the last thing I think we'll talk about Oh no, it's not the last thing. Oh my goodness, there's so many things. I have another finished object I can show you. Well, it's two finished objects, actually. This is a bit of an odd one. So I spoke about Knit Crate. i oh, sorry about that. We just had to take a short break because, first of all, this little chap decided he wanted to go on another barking rampage down the garden. But then he came in and I just started recording again, and a pheasant just came walking past the window, just walked down the garden and out down the side of our house. Bold as brass, calm as you like. Couldn't believe it. So I leapt up to try and get some footage for you, but by the time I got there, he was down the end of the garden. He was tiny, and you couldn't really see anything. <laughs> but wow. And then, of course, he wanted to go and bark at him, so I had to keep him in here for a bit, so he didn't, didn't scare the poor thing half to death. So... Yeah, fancy that, eh? Partridge in the garden, whatever, next. Uh, pheasant, I mean, pheasant in the garden. Anyway, I have no idea what I was saying now before all of that happened. So I've got these two projects to show you, um, which I made out of Knit Crate Yarn. Oh, that was it. Okay, another interruption. This thing is getting out of control. Um, so I was trying to tell you about the Knit Crate boxes. So I get the membership box, um, which I get for free because they signed me up as one of their Knit Crate 
ambassadors which means that um, if you use one of my links to go through I get like a tiny little percentage like a little fee thing but on the plus side as far as you guys are concerned it does mean I get to offer you a discount so um, if you use my link and you sign up and you haven't signed up before then you get to uh, get 20% off your order so if you use Sandra 20 so if you go to the show notes rather and use that link and then you use Sandra 20 you can get 20% off of your order as well as me getting a little fee so it's a little bit nicer than some of them in that we both get something out of it um, but yeah I did want to mention that because I think I talked about Nick Crate before and I, although I didn't mention any of the links or the discount or anything in a way that I could get any benefit from it I did actually forget to say that it was free so I just wanted to make that clear um, oh and the other thing was someone asked me whether the boxes that I got had customs charges on them because obviously they're coming well not obviously but they are coming from America and as I'm UK based and some of my viewers are probably UK based as well that's a sort of valid question so um, the answer for me is no I don't but because I get them free I assume they send them out sort of without a value so there probably isn't a customer's charge anyway so I don't know if you are paying for them and you get them whether you do now I asked Nick Crate this question and they did actually come back to me and they said that they changed how they're shipping them and so people shouldn't get them any customs charges from now on so I don't that kind of seems to imply that they might have done in the past um, I don't know what they've changed so I can't say for sure that you won't but all I can tell you is that they've said that that you shouldn't I don't know but yeah but that's the information I have so I thought I'd pass it on to you anyway let's get on with what we're making so this was another spur of the moment project I got a blouse the other day which was um, white with little navy pinstripes I think I might have worn it on the last podcast or the podcast before anyway I thought oh I'm in a nice little sort of red sort of little thin scarfy thing would be nice to sort of set this off that would look really nice and I didn't have anything like that so I thought oh I'll make one I've got I remembered this knit crate box that I got that had bright red yarn which I had no idea what to do with at the time that's something I could do with it I could just make up a little thin scarf so that's what I did so here it is as you can see it's crazy bright red even more so on the camera actually because Cameras tend to get a bit excited about red, don't they? They go a bit mad. Um, yeah, so this is my first attempt. And I say my first attempt because I've gone and made a second one. So, as you can see, I haven't even, I haven't woven the ends in yet and I haven't blocked it either. Um, I quite like this. I like these little um, bumps down the side. I quite like the sort of meshy openness of it. I wasn't too happy with this squared off end thing though. It wasn't quite what I imagined. I wanted something more... This will come as no surprise if you are a regular here. <laughs> And will probably be quite dull, dull and repetitive for you, I do apologise. Um, but yeah, I wanted sort of something hanging on the end, some sort of dangly bit. I wanted more of a... I didn't want that straight finish. The reason I did it like that for this was I imagined I'd add bits afterwards. And that would sort of make it look how I wanted it to look. But I, could, I just couldn't get it working at all. So in the end, I just squared it off so I actually had a finished item. Now I still thought perhaps I could hang bits from here, but it just wasn't working at all. I think you could do tassels, but I just don't... Tassels aren't fitting the bill, they're not what I want, you know? Although, in the abstract sense, they're fine. In the fitting what I want in my head, not fine at all. So yeah, so basically I sort of set this aside. And I know it's, it's nice. It's not what I wanted. But I do quite like it. I might just sort of weave in the ends, block it and perhaps just keep it keep it as a gift or something or I don't know 
but yes it's a perfectly lovely thing it's just not the thing I wanted so I made another one and uh, as you can see it has the requisite dangly flappy uneven ends that I wanted so this you might recognize this It's interesting because I really, holding these up to the camera, I really like the body of that. But I kind of wanted it to have more of this kind of effect on the ends. Yeah, it's almost like I need to amalgamate the two, isn't it? Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that now. I was quite happy with this initially and now, <laughs> now I'm not so sure. Anyway, let's... Um, so this sort of stitch pattern, this... I don't know if you can really call it a stitch pattern, but this that I have created is the same as I did for a shawl that I talked about two podcasts ago, which I called my Dark Star Shawl, um, which is based on my Ricicle Shawl. Sorry, I'm just trying to think of words. Yeah, there's a pattern I have called Ricicle Shawl, which is a triangle shape, and this is the same kind of fabric. So I thought, oh, well, I'll make that again. But the reason I thought I'd use that yet again is because, A, it's kind of open, but it scrunches up small, because I just, I did want it to be quite thin. I don't want it to be a sort of, it's, you know, it's quite a summery blouse, so I don't want it to be a big, massive thing. I just want it to be more decorative than warming as such. So I quite like it, and I like how it looks on, and when I'm wearing the blouse, by the way. But I just, I quite like I like that anyway. Um, yeah, but it does do this nice end thing, and I just quite like how that sort of falls all raggedy. It seems to be something I'm into lately. But I do also think <laughs> I don't know. There's something a bit weird about this scarf, about this end. It looks sort of I don't know, like biological. <laughs> It looks kind of like, organic would be a nice word, wouldn't it? Um, like seaweed or, you know, like sort of seaweed where it has those sort of like kind of little seed pockets on it. It kind of looks a bit like that or like tentacles or something. The beautiful imagery that I'm creating here it's just going to make you all want to rush out and buy your own red yarn and make a weird tentacle puppy scarf. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move swiftly on for fear of uh, sounding slightly odd. <laughs> Too late. Yeah, well, you know, it's all just experiments, isn't it? <laughs> it's experiments, it keeps me happy keeps me off the street doesn't it um so last thing i've no idea how long this is now because i've stopped like a million times and i don't know what's going on i feel like it's been long though um it's something that i'm making at the moment so i've got quite a lot of things off the needles now so just a quick whip which is socks again i know boring boring um, yeah, but it's double knit, so let's not dither too long. Um, so it's a double knit sock. Um, I saw the pattern when I was looking for these other ones. I saw the pattern, and I can't remember the name of it or anything about it. Oh my goodness! I only started this last night. I shall have to pop it down in um, into show notes for you. But basically, it's got little heart shapes on it. And um, the pattern is made with sort of solid or semi-solid yarns, which I thought would be really nice. So I had, I remembered I had this yarn. Um, and it's this Erica Knight for John Lewis. Now I picked this up quite a while ago um, in John Lewis, so I had no idea if you can still get hold of it. It doesn't really seem to have a name other than it's than that so I guess that's what it's called so it's a double knit and it's a hundred percent wool so there's no nylon in that which makes it an interesting choice for socks really and there's no nylon in these incidentally that's a hundred percent merino 
I have had 100% merino socks before though, so I think if I'm careful it shouldn't be too bad. Um, these might be slightly better because it's 100% wool, it might be a little bit more sturdy than just merino because it doesn't give a breed or anything, I'm assuming it's just sort of more of a random blend of salted bits, but the, it's quite sort of woolly, I don't know if you can see the little fibres coming off of it and it's quite registers reasonably high on the itch index and um, not too bad though it's still pretty soft I'm going to put that as a three out of five by the way I've just created the itchability index which goes up to five and that's a three um, <laughs> um, what was I saying yes so yeah, I remembered I had this and I remembered I had these colours. So there was blue in the pattern was blue. So I wanted to do the socks in this with the little hearts, three little hearts that are at the top. I'll pop a picture in, then you can know what we're talking about and it will all be easier. So yeah, I thought I'd do the hearts in this and I thought, oh that looked nice. But when it came to it, I only have one ball of this, and these are only 50 grams, so it's saying approximately 110 metres, which isn't gonna be enough to do two socks. Now I have other colours in here. Look at this, I love that. And I'd got them to go all together on a project with my original idea. I think I've got cream as well. That's down the um, back of the house. I've got something sticking into that. Um, yeah, my original idea was to make some sort of project out of them, but obviously I never got around to it. And these have been sitting in stash. So anyway, the original idea didn't work because I've only got one of these and I wasn't sure even if I substituted like heels, cuffs and toes whether that would be enough. It might have been. I'm not sure I want to risk it. So I switched to knitting in this because I have another ball of this. And then I was thinking I might use this for the heels and toes. And then I might just use these ones. I might use all of these for the hearts. Or maybe just the darker pink for the hearts. But then I'd like the blues as well and I kind of wanted to incorporate them. Maybe just the blues for the heart. Or maybe a mixture of just the blues for the hearts. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> that might look quite nice. But do I go... So there's three rows of hearts, so do I go light blue heart, dark blue heart, and then light blue heart again? I don't know. I don't know quite how that's going to evolve. Suggestions are welcome, as always. They don't always elucidate, sometimes they confuse. Someone, you know, you think of one idea, or you think of two ideas, and then someone always says, oh, what about this third option? You're like, no, not more options. You're supposed to be narrowing it down, not widening it out. <laughs> but yeah, this one I'm really not sure. So my original thought basically was I'll have the pink and then I'll have some dark hearts, dark pink hearts, dark blue hearts, light blue hearts, and then obviously the pink is a background. The light pink is a background colour. That's quite nice. And then I was thinking heels and toes in that just to... I think just because I quite like the colours together, so I thought it'd be still quite nice to do a project with them all together. But yeah. Um, I just wanted to do a quick bit about patterns in progress. Because um, I've been getting questions about my two um, Ziggy patterns that I've got coming out soon. Um, so the first one is Getting Ziggy Squared, that's the uh, blanket one. Um, that's been tech edited, it's with testers, that one's nearly ready to go, hopefully very soon, definitely won't be this week, maybe next week, hopefully next week, um, just need to check where sort of testers are, I know some of them have finished, so yeah, so that one's imminent, um, and then the other one which is the Ziggy Interrupted, that's the scarf one with the little squares in, um, that's a little further behind, that's still with the tech editor at the moment, so testing still to go on that one, so I don't know. Um, 
yeah these things always take longer than you think don't they but yeah i mean it's it's in progress it's moving along uh, you know just unfortunately these things just take a bit longer than you think sometimes but um yeah hopefully not too much longer on either of those but uh getting ziggy squared maybe next week if not probably the week after so that's something at least so the last section is going to be pod mail. So this was a new section that I introduced in the last podcast and it's basically where um, I can answer your questions. So if you've got a, uh, a question that you would like to ask me and obviously if it's knitting and crochet related, relevant to the podcast, um, I thought it'd be nice to answer it here because a lot of times when people ask a question, if one person's thinking it, Probably other people are thinking it too so I thought if we answered it here it might be useful for more of you so I thought that might be quite nice so if you want to ask um, a question a pod mail question then um, just leave a comment so you can leave a comment just here on uh, YouTube you can pop across to the Ravelry group which is Cherry Hearts Cozy Corner you can ask it in there I think I started a, a pod mail thread actually so you can pop it in there um, and also where else could you put it oh I was going to say on show notes if you're on show notes you could ask it there so if you just put whatever your question is and if you're happy to be used for it to be used in a pod mail section that would be fab and then I'll know that uh, you don't mind me using it for that um so today's question is quite a quickie and it's from Lauren Gomez on uh, who left a comment on YouTube and she asked uh when I wind my Hank's intercakes, do I leave them in the Hank, as you see here, or do I wind them straight away, and why? So, the answer is, I leave them in Hank's for the most part. So I uh, generally don't make use of the uh, winding surface that like some yarn shops and things offer. I generally leave them in the Hank. So there's two reasons for that. One is that I have my own yarn winder and swift. Yep, that's the word. Um, which I could have brought up to show you actually, but I didn't think of that. We might have to cover that in another <laughs> another pod mail question if people are interested. Um, yeah, so I've got my own ones of those. So partly I don't mind doing it myself, so that's not an issue. But the other reason is, and I'm not sure if this is true, but this is the reason I used, is that um, I'd heard that the yarn is more relaxed when it's in the hanks. So when you wind it up into a cake, I'll show you one as I have one here, like this. Um, as you're winding it up and pulling on the yarn, it's, you know, it's feeding off the swift, but it's being pulled on to be wound up into the cake, you're creating a tension in the yarn so that the yarn that's caked up like this is under slightly more tension basically um, than it would be when it's just sitting more relaxed on the hank. So basically I think the thinking is that because there's that bit of tension there the yarn is under that little bit of extra stress and there's I guess a theory that it may become like I don't know really now I come to say it but I guess the theory is that it you know if it's overstretched it may sort of lose some of its elasticity it perhaps won't stretch back so it's better for it to be stored in its relaxed natural state rather than in a pulled out state um yeah so generally once I've decided what I want to do with a um a yarn you know I've pull out some hanks, I'll decide on colours and once I know what I'm going to do with it that's the point and I'm ready, normally when I'm actually ready to make it is the point when then I'll wind it up and and start working on it. So that's what I do, that's why I do it. Um, I think if you haven't got your own winder obviously then the winding services in the that people offer are a lot more, a lot more helpful because it will save you the job of doing it and the expense of getting your own and also I suppose if you just don't like doing it but that's the reason why like I say I'm not sure how if that's a proven thing I think I've just heard it from you know other people saying that that's what they did and that's why they did it so that's where I picked it up from um, I have however 
quite a few, I don't think you can quite see it in there, they're there. Ones that I have wound up and then I moved on and didn't make the project. It doesn't happen very often because I'm normally quite, you know, it's quite imminent by the time I wind them. But there are some up there that are wound or leftover bits. Um, and I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to use them or anything. I think they'd be fine. Whenever I've wound up minis or anything and sort of had them in the ball, I hadn't noticed a problem per se. So I don't know. It might be one of those things that, let's say you were making a garment and you had two balls that were pre-round and sat there for two years and the rest were hadn't. Perhaps you would notice some difference in the way they worked up. I don't know. But there you go. That's my answer. I hope that's useful or interesting or vaguely relevant to anyone watching <laughs> but yes if you um so thank you very much uh, for that question and um yeah if anyone else would like to answer um ask another question just drop a little note down and let me know um so that's it for me this time i haven't got any incoming goodies again um i still seem to be on my self-imposed yarn diet um and I'm relatively happy knitting for my lovely little stash here at the moment, so yeah. I'm feeling a bit like, yeah, I'm going to knit from my stash all year, woo! Apart from when I need to buy yarn from garments because I haven't got any garment quantities or anything. And also, probably it just naturally won't last anyway, but at the moment I'm feeling quite motivated to try and use my stash as much as possible anyway. But. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. I'm sure I'll crack sooner or later. But yeah, I think that's it for me. So thank you ever so much for sticking with me if you have stuck with me all this time. Sorry, it's been a bit long. And um, yeah, look after yourselves. I hope you find some lovely, relaxing time to craft in. And I will see you next time. Bye. It's a one-handed bye because... Bert's got my other hand this time. Bye. <laughs>